Welcome everybody to the introduction to TechSoup's digital marketing services and use cases. I love this to be here sharing with you today. I know you're going to learn a lot by TAP Network. Uh, my name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here. I'm going to show you on the next slide how you can engage today. I know someone has already turned on the closed caption because I see it just pop up on the window. If you need the closed caption, just look at the bottom of your screen on Zoom and you look for the word CC. You can turn on the closed caption. This is being recorded, so you're going to get the recording and the slides uh, by tomorrow. And I would love you to do me a favor. When you leave, sometimes you have to leave early, there's going to be a window that's going to pop up. It's just a two-question survey, two simple questions that we want to know you know, want to hear about what more questions that you want to ask Tap Network and also what other webinars that you'd like to know about. So I'm going to move out of the way and turn this over to Joe Di Giovanni. I got it right, right, Joe? He's a co-founder of Tap Network, and he's going to tell you more about himself and Lisa. Have a great one. Great. Hi, everybody. Um, we'll be pulling up the uh, the slides shortly, but we're super excited. I'm Joe DiGiovanni. I'm one of the co-founders of TAP Network, and we're going to be uh, going over TechSoup's marketing services that we provide nonprofits. So um, I also have with me Lisa Quigley. She's our director of strategy, and we'll be doing this presentation together. Feel free to put questions in the comment box, and as we go through the presentation, we'll try to answer them. If not, we're leaving some time for Q&A at the end of the uh, presentation. Great, can you guys see? Lisa, would you mind sharing your screen? Yep, I think it's up and everybody should see. If, uh, if you can't, let us know. Let's see. It's up on how we can help you. All of our wonderful services. Aretha, can you see our screen? Yes, I can. I'm sorry, I was trying to unmute. Okay, yep, we're good to go. Great. Okay, so I'm sorry. So um, I'm going to go through some of the slides here. I, I can't see the screen, so I'm just going to um, pull it up here myself just to make sure. So how can we help you? Uh, so for TAP Network, we provide a lot of different services for nonprofits. We, are, we provide all the marketing services for TechSoup as an organization, and then we also provide services exclusively for all their members. That ranges from strategy to creative branding, marketing services, website development, customized software, AI, uh, we run the whole gamut. So we're super excited today to talk about the, uh, the marketing services that we provide. So the next slide agenda, I'm just gonna go through what we're talking about today. You just heard a little bit about TAP, um, and then we're gonna really talk about the marketing forces that are shaping the nonprofit industry. Things are changing fast. We're in this age of acceleration, especially with AI now and, and mobile and, and everything else that's converging. And then we'll talk about the different types of offerings that we have, but also budget allocation. Budget's a very tough thing to, uh, to, to address. And we'll take a look at some national averages in terms of what people are investing, what organizations are investing in, in their website and their marketing services. And then we'll look at the services that we provide through TechSoup, which is project-based services. So one-off services that, that are urgent, critical for your nonprofit in terms of marketing. And then we'll look at ongoing retainer services, which are more along the lines of support services or managing your campaigns. And in some cases, being your outsourced chief marketing officer or outsourced agency. And then we'll go through how to get started working with TechSoup. We have a bunch of really great free resources we'll share with you as well. And then we'll go through some Q&A. As Aretha mentioned, this entire presentation will be emailed to you with all the links as well. So to kick it off, we quickly, we'll, we'll just talk about the, the forces that are really shaping nonprofit. We've been doing this for 15 years now. And this, the past few years, especially come out of COVID, things have really accelerated, like I mentioned. There's the omni-channel donor journey. What that means is that 
as marketers, especially with nonprofits, we're not just seeing, you know, single channels or multi-channel, we're seeing omni-channel messaging. And with the technology now, if you see, you know, the way things work with Netflix and Amazon, where these, these um, companies recognize who you are and what you've read and, and what you like, the same thing is happening in the nonprofit space. So we're able to tailor that messaging when people engage with, you know, email, social media, website content, blogs, donation forms. So that whole omni-channel journey, that's from a technology standpoint, has gotten to the point where those tools are now available for nonprofits super cost effectively, which has really changed the way that we can market. And then content-centric engagement, we're seeing a lot more um, storytelling and influencer marketing. And content now with AI is easier to create but then again, if it's too AI-ish looking, it, it doesn't work. But there's a, a huge revolution in terms of content and really driving storytelling and then data as well. Data to help your, your, don your donor journey, data to help go back to your funders from your marketing to show them what's working, data to look at the engagement rates and, and, and ROI on your advertising. So all these converging forces are really coming together lately. We, we want to help nonprofits make sense of it make it affordable and be able to uh, to implement it. So that's what we'll go over today. I'll hand it over to Lisa and she can tackle uh, budget because before we even get into all this, just kind of share some information on, on different types of, of budgeting. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Joe. Um, as Joe mentioned, my name is Lisa Quigley and I'm the Director of Account Strategy here at TAP. I have 20 years of experience, not only working for uh, for profits and nonprofits, comp companies of all sizes, um, back in the day of traditional marketing, all the way through digital marketing. So again, thank you so much for having me. Um, to take a, a dive into investing into your um, digital marketing, it's really just not about spending, it's amplifying impact, strategically allocating your resources to maximize your reach and effectiveness. To know that every dollar that you can spend potentially reaches hundreds of thousands of people. So again, not just about spending, but investing. So let's break down our recommendations on budget allocations. So for your website, we suggest having one to 3% of your total annual income or budget here in your website. Of course, it's the first thing that people often see. It's the brochure, it's, it's that, uh, first impression you have. And sometimes it's really the only touch point you have for supporters and stakeholders. So again, this investment in your website to make sure it's user-friendly, it's accessible, will help you effectively communicate your mission. The next section we like to talk about is technology and allocating again, three to 6% of your total annual budget towards technology. So what does that mean? Um, it essentially talks about tools like we're going to say CRM, which is a customer um, or relationship management system. You'll hear us say CMS, that's content management system, what your website and your blogs live on. Donation platforms, there's all kinds of different software out there that can help you collect donations. Data management, member portals, on and on. So that's about three to six percent. And then general marketing, I mean, is this your staff? Is this you? Is this print? But we it, it encompasses everything. And we recommend about five to 15% of your total budget for overall marketing campaigns, promotional activities, driving awareness, um, engagement, and in the end, action. But keep in mind a couple of factors. Um, flexibility here. We're talking about a range, but also these percentages are definitely not a one size fits all. Smaller, newer nonprofits, definitely start on the lower end while, while uh, more established organizations might invest heavily. Um, it depends on goals and making sure that you're aligning your spending with your goals and with your capacity. If you're a digital first organization, so many organizations operate remote um, and they're very successful at adopting this digital first mindset. So if your organization does rely heavily on aggregating your organizers, your stakeholders digitally, then you may want to think about investing um, more in the technology aspect. 
and you would be on the higher end of that. Um, but of course, all of this in the digital landscape takes reassessing and it's constantly evolving. Joe mentioned the evolution of AI and how these tools can help be, become, make your organization become more efficient. So it is definitely worth talking to um, experts that know the latest and the most trusted tools and to assess your budget um, on, a, on a regular basis. So investing in digital is, again, not just about creating um, a multiplier effect for your nonprofit, but it's about investing uh, in technology and having a smart use of your funds will allow your whole organization um, to do more with less. So we get into the fun part here. Enough of us talking. We'd like to throw up a poll let me see if I can do this and get some feedback for you. I forgot that I was gonna have to execute the poll. Oh, there we go. Yay. I got it. Thank you, you, Aretha. Um, where does your nonprofit need the most help? Is it website development, maintenance, digital marketing strategy, donor engagement and fundraising? DRM, we talked about that customer relationship management and data management, social media and content creation. If you see that poll on your screen, all right, results are coming in. 74% donor engagement and fundraising. I'm gonna give it a few more seconds to show you these great, great results. Do you see these up here, Joe? Yes. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. All right, to get into our services that touches on all of those aspects, so you, as we keep in mind, um, are our digital marketing services. Let's see. We like to break these up into uh, project-based services and ongoing retainer services. So it may mean that you have a special event coming up, you have to hit a certain donation amount, those are our, in a short amount of time. We'll start talking about those project-based services. It could be that you need a rebrand of your logo of your website. Um, a short amount of time, very straightforward. Uh, we also have ongoing retainer services. This could be, we need a couple hours a month to make sure our content is updated, our social media is updated. Anywhere we'll go along the marketing funnel, we'll get into that. Um, but we're going to need help on a regular basis. So those that's how we're going to talk about our services today. And there was our poll question. Awesome. I'm going to kick it over to Joe to talk about our beautiful, wonderful branding and design services. Sure. Thanks, Lisa. So as, as Lisa mentioned, we have project-based services. Um, one of the first project-based services that, that we engage with with clients are folks who need a rebrand or a new brand completely. So that would include a brand strategy, logo design. They might have an old, you know, um, smart art logo, but, you know, we'll, we'll come in and do the logo, brand messaging, brand guidelines, visual identity creation, so all these things are critical. I know when you're a small nonprofit, you might just have a logo, but as you as you grow and scale, it's really important that that your branding resonates and that you have a brand guide and brand book. So when you're working with designers or working with partners, all this is packaged up and it lets folks know, here's our font size, here's our colors, here's our brand, here's the do's and don'ts. All these pieces are important. And as you grow, um, we can work with you. It could be just starting with the logo, but ultimately helping a lot of folks with all of their brand identity and, and a brand guide. Uh, here's an example of Delaware Pathways. So in this case, they had an old, an old logo. We came up with the new logo here that had the compass for, you know, for, for the pathway and navigation, navigating your journey to success. We worked with a lot of different focus groups, not just on the logo, but on, on that tagline as well. And then different iterations of the logo for print, for social, for the website and, and packages this all up. Here's just the, you know, a screen grab of, of the logo, but they have an entire brand book that, that they use throughout the government and throughout all their non nonprofit partners. So that's just a, 
quick example of getting started with the logo, but ultimately going to a whole brand guide if, if that's what you need. Great. And talking about a deeper dive into your website development, um, if you're thinking about either rebranding or um, relaunching your website, we can help walk you through that process. I saw a question about the, all this terminology is, is unfamiliar um, and can we dial it back and kind of walk through it step by step? And absolutely, like that is what we one, love to do and what we're here for. So please feel free to put any questions because if you have a question, I'm sure someone else has that question. I'm just going to go step by step in our process of thinking about, hey, I don't feel like our website is working for us or we just started a new organization and we need a website. Where do we start? Well, we start with the strategy, talking about what is your ultimate goal? I mean, we want to reach, yes, I want everyone to know about my organization and donate, but we have to really dig into that and say, well, who specifically, who are you trying to reach um, and what is the best place to reach them? And now we all use words to communicate, but we all know that not all of the words people receive in the same way. So what are the correct words in the correct order at the right time to say that people will get our message? So we come up with that strategy even before we start to talk about colors and designs for your website. We start to think about the experience that you want your audience, whether it be, again, donors or consumers, to have when they come to your site. Do you want them to feel moved? Do you want them to take action? Is it to donate? Is it to share? So that experience and interaction um, will be first and foremost before we even start to think about um, the buttons in the menu. But we also can do, we also will do design next, taking into consideration that strategy, the user experience, the goals. Behind the scenes of your website, we can set up what's called a content management platform. That's what your website lives on so that it is very easy, almost like you're operating social media, plug and play, or we could help manage that so that you can constantly, so that you can keep your website information fresh so that if you have minutes or an event that you're, you're able to update that easily. Um, we also think about first and foremost, not only uh, literacy and reading level, but also accessibility. We wanna make sure that it went, no matter if someone is on the mobile, on an iPad, um, on a desktop, we're going to be thinking about their experience on that device, making sure that they can see it, they can hear it, and they can read it. Because at the end of the day, if you have a beautiful site, but it's not coming across, um, it, it's not going to reach your constituents, and also it's not going to accomplish your goals. So that's what we think about when even before we even start um, to develop a website. I'm going to see if we can, I have a question. Can you compare WordPress versus Wix sites? So I'm just going to address this here. Um, and absolutely. So those are both content management systems. Wix is very user-friendly, um, a little bit more on the affordable side. It definitely something that if you are a one person show, something that you could, uh, startup, but it's less customizable, very out of the box. You're going to, they're going to show you a couple of different templates, and then you're going to be able to pick one and plug your colors in and go. Whereas WordPress, it's really, um, the sky's the limit with customization, different plugins that we can add. Um, and so it's basically just the sophistication of each platform. So thank you for that question. I'm going to go into um, an example and just show you again, a, a walk you through a real life scenario of a website that we did for an organization in Delaware called Birth to Three. There's a Birth to Three organization in every state, and this organization helps identify children with um, differences and disabilities. And they had their goal when we talked about strategy was reaching parents, caregivers, and uh, physicians and providers 
to let them know that these services were available. They only a fraction of the children in the state even were aware of the services. Um, when we were doing research and figuring out more of their goals, they said a lot of there's a certain population in a certain area that really need our services and aren't getting them. So when we went through the strategy of the language, um, of the design, we made sure to take that into consideration. And we carried that all the way through all of the um, all of our marketing efforts with this with this campaign. Um, so yeah, that was a really great project. Check it out, uh, the website and the whole campaign. And I'm going to pass it over to Joe uh, okay. to talk about CRMs. Great. Thanks, Lisa. So just, just to recap, like I said, or Lisa mentioned, you know, there's these project-based marketing uh, services that we we provide and, and most uh, nonprofits need to undertake. So it started with branding and messaging. And then we get to the website and, you know, great question. Should we be using Wix? Wix is, you know, a, a great for starting out. It's your first apartment when you graduate school, but then, you know, you move into a house, uh, a WordPress type site. And then the next thing that a lot of nonprofits work with is a CRM. So a lot of cases we use HubSpot. CRM is a customer relationship management system. And what that is used for is, it's for managing all of your, your database, all of your members, and you can have all your email in there, your social media, all your messaging, you can manage your website. So it's all in, all in one spot. So you might be using MailChimp or Constant Contact, and they may have you know, some services within there where you have your list of, of donors and whatnot. But this takes it to the next level where you can manage the messaging and, man and, and measure all the engagement from all your members, volunteers, all your publishing. So it's an all-in-one system that a lot of nonprofits, once they begin to scale, they need to upgrade their, their CRM. So that's another marketing service that we provide. Uh, on the next slide, we just go through kind of what that might look like on the back end. So each one of your members, you'll have that, they'll be in your database and we'll have notes about them. You'll have every piece of engagement. If they read a blog about an event coming up, if they attended that event, if they donated X amount at the past event, and then you, these could all be lead triggers where then boom, an email gets sent out or you get notified to call them if they're on the donor page and you know that they're a big donor. So all this uh, technology is available now for nonprofits. It's inexpensive. And if you could put it all into one system instead of all these different silos, there's your social, there's your website database, there's your email database, if it's all in one spot, then it's really... It's golden and you can integrate all these pieces. So as you're scaling, um, this is something that a lot of nonprofits, once you're ready to really drive a marketing campaign, um, you're gonna need a CRM. In this case, we use HubSpot, there's Salesforce, and, and there's a few others, but this is gonna be critical down the road as, as you scale. And then the next piece, and this is a, a new offering, marketing offering that we have through TechSoup, and it's it's our AI offerings. So a lot of these um, AI, AI is just evolving so fast. So the first offering that we have with TechSoup to get started, I think it's 975, and it's an AI audit and plan, where we'll look at all the different systems you have, your marketing, your technology stack, and we'll make recommendations on where AI can enhance uh, your marketing, your fundraising, your partner acquisition, your member engagement. So it's something that to get started and, and really have a plan is important, especially as, as things evolve. But here's just a list of a lot of different ways that we can use AI to enhance your marketing. It could be a chat bot. A lot of times we'll put it onto analytics, which is super important for donors. We could help personalize messaging and content. We'll show you some of that accelerating fundraising enablement, website accessibility, content amplification, scheduling your social media. So as AI evolves, a lot of what you're doing manually can be automated with a personal touch and it could really help amplify your marketing. We're still in the super early stages, but we're seeing a lot of nonprofits that we're working with starting to make an impact in different levels, whether it's their marketing, their operations, 
or, or their fundraising. Let's see, next slide. Great, so here, here's some examples. Um, you might have seen some customized GPTs. These are chat bots per se. So you might be, you know, you might see these on your, uh, you know, if, if you're visiting Amazon or you're visiting a site where the chat bot pops up, we're starting to create a lot of different chat bots for nonprofits. We're doing it with United Way right now for their 211 systems. You could build a chat bot into a website. They might come to your website and they could be asking about your big fundraising event or, an, or a race for diabetes. And within that chat bot, it's answering their questions. We feed it all the information on the back end so it has something to pull from. And then we could weave the donation ask right into the chat bot as they're asking questions and the chat bot begins to understand what, what they're interested in. So this is um, something that's evolving quickly and we and we believe it's really gonna help transform event event management and, and fundraising. And you could do it right, right on your website. You could drive it directly from your social media. So we're getting a lot of requests now it's for customized uh, chatbots and, and GPTs. Then on the next slide, just to give you an example of, of what this looks like, um, the way AI works is we could put together all different types of automation. So we'll have a client, in this case, they asked us, we would like you to summarize the website content. This is from a new site and create social media posts with ChatGPT um, and then publish it through these different um, social media channels that we have, LinkedIn, Facebook, and, and X, formerly Twitter. So we would put this platform together and this workflow. So with a lot of nonprofits, after we do that audit and plan around AI for the marketing, then we could set up these automations where it can go, you know, we can go out, browse the web, pull content, rewrite the content at a certain literacy level or in, within a certain language, and then republish it onto social media. That's just one. There's thousands, countless different workflows, but we can work with you to see where we can automate some of your some of your marketing. So this is super exciting and evolving. And love to talk to you more about that as as um, as this continues to scale. All right, so next slide here is ongoing retainer services. Great. So we have a couple different retainer services. So these were all project based things. Clients come up to us and they say, "Hey, we need a CRM. We need help with branding. Can you do an AI audit?" We need a new website. So these are they are all one-offs. Now we're going to talk about the marketing services that TechSoup provides that are retainer. So if you've heard of, you know, fractional CMOs and, and language around fractional or your part-time CMO, this is where we come in and we're your part-time chief marketing officer. We can come in and serve as your technology team. And one of the retainer services that we offer is uh, website support. So you may have a website it's functioning, it's functioning great, but you don't have a team to really update it, maybe add landing page, pages or in, you know improve the SEO, or you have a new event coming up, or you need to add more graphics and it's super time consuming and you don't want to screw it up on the back end. We come in and we provide website support. And that just depends on how many hours per month you may need. It could be on the highly technical side where we're adding some code. It could be simply some, some social media posts that need to be integrated into the website. But it's it's you have a trusted team behind you and you know that you can count on us in TechSoup to support your website needs and we can evaluate how many hours a month you might need so you can be out there doing what, what you guys do best. So that's the website support. On the next slide, Here's just an example of Washington State Community Connectors. This is an organization, very collective impact focused. They work with partners who are in the community that serve the community. And they also have programs that serve the community uh, specifically. So they have many different audiences. One's partners, one's community members. And then, you know, we, we've built the web. They're always upgrading their website to address events and things for, for those two different audiences. So we built out the marketing plan for their target audiences. On the bottom left, you could see the 
the customer journey. So in some cases, it's donors getting them to donate. It's getting partners to be involved and then to, to really be active with, with the coalition. And then also it's with uh, funders as well. So they're always adding to their website, events, initiatives, partners, and we're continuing to help them evolve. But instead of spending all this money up front on their website, it's you know it's a monthly retainer to get them uh, moving along the way. So that's that's kind of the website retainer service that we have. And then we also have um, full funnel campaign management. So what what that means is we have marketing services that are ongoing retainer too. So that could be marketing and technology strategy. It could be each each month we're working with you on your messaging. It could be launching different campaigns, placing ads, managing your ads, managing your Google ad budget, uh, event marketing support, doing your social media, email marketing. So full funnel basically means if you talk about a funnel, top funnel is awareness, middle funnel is you're educating and engaging folks, capturing their names and email addresses, and bottom funnel being conversion. You're getting these folks to actually donate or to commit to behavior change if you're trying to impact the community. So we help organizations at all different stages of the funnel. And again, it's an ongoing retainer service. So hourly based, we work with you to find out what you need done, how many hours per month that would take, and then we move forward uh, accordingly. Next slide. So yeah, just to put it in perspective, especially with marketing services, anytime you know you engage with your team or with an agency or or a partner such as TechSoup, you're always looking at you know what are you trying to do? Is if it's if it's driving a donation, you're going to have to work within this funnel. All your marketing is ultimately going to drive folks from awareness to consideration to conversion, where they donate and then become advocates. If you're trying to engage the community, and let's say it's around Narcan, for example, a client that we have, you know, within the opioid crisis. How do we get folks aware of the crisis, aware of how Narcan can help? How to administer our Narcan, make a pledge to have it on hand, and then become advocates of it. So no matter if you're driving funding or trying to impact the community, the goal with all your marketing is to get people down this funnel. And whether it's the top of the funnel or bottom, if you see on the right, these are all the services that we could provide to fill in for you uh, to get you there. At the top, advertising, social media, SEO, Google ads, that's getting people to your website. That's top of the funnel. And then as you move down, you know, we talked about HubSpot and the CRM, but this is where we're capturing leads in the consideration and conversion phase and then we're emailing these folks now that we know who they are, what they're interested in. So bottom funnel is more around email marketing and retargeting on advertising and, and things of that nature. So we thought we'd throw this slide in here just to give an example of the whole funnel, but also how our services really fill in to get people to, um, to engage with your nonprofit to drive fundraising and, and impact. That was awesome, Joe. That was a Great summary of how marketing for um, anyone really works from, from the top on down, even as consumers um, or in the marketplace, we experience it. Um, but as marketers and business owners um, or, or leaders of nonprofits, it's good to understand that process. Um, so just pausing right here, uh, we wanted to bring on Michael to ask a question um, as it may be easier than typing in the chat. So. We're all yours, Michael. Thanks for the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, sorry about the photo. It's not that brilliant. Um, I, I'm, struggling, I'm struggling to interpret what I perceive as very American language. I'm talking from the United Kingdom, and the organization I work with represents older people. So all the words you're using are pressing the wrong buttons that allow me to 
interact with you on a constructive level. For instance, we have no income. I think that immediately makes what I'm asking for almost irrelevant. Over to you. Well, thank you for hopping on here and rep giving us your feedback and your question. And again, I'm sure others um, who watch this now or later have that same question. And yes, I think what you ended with is that all of these things that we are talking about specifically today do take a certain level of budget at the level that we're talking about. So a CR, uh, when we're talking about a CRM or websites, um, there are ways that you can absolutely be an organization that of one or of um, limited resources and still take some of the principles that we're talking about today with the marketing funnel and awareness and apply them. But some of the tools and technology specifically um, would be hard until you figure out, um, you know, we were talking about grants earlier. How could you apply for grants? How could you start to get donations and then understand how would I allocate those budgets and that resource in order to do the most good? Um, Joe, do you have anything else? No, I think, you know, it's 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 chicken and egg. And as as funding comes in, it's, you know, being aware of where where to invest that the, those dollars from a marketing standpoint. TechSoup offers a lot of different resources, guides, downloads, courses on how to DIY do 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 this yourself. And I think as as you get more grant money and and donations, you can slowly, you know, evolve into some of this. Some of the offerings that we have here. They start around 500 US dollars a month, and that gets you approximately four hours of, you know, really highly specialized teams time to, to support you in these endeavors. And, and that might be a place to start as, as funding comes in. Great, thanks. Um, <clears throat> and I appreciate all the questions coming in about the tiers and, um, how much it costs. And we will for sure get to that. I want to talk um, a little bit ab about that funnel and, and just talk about some use cases of marketing and maybe putting it in the perspective of um, yourself as the consumer and then translating that to how could you um, think about using those same tactics uh, and strategies for your organization um, to get people involved. And again, thinking about Yes, there's ways to invest, but there are also ways to do this um, without an investment in creativity, creatively, um, whether it is word or mouth um, or other things. So for when we were talking, when Joe talks about the top of the funnel and advertising, this is um, strictly awareness, being made aware of a product, a service, an organization that you may not have known about before. Um, if you uh, if, if you think of a newspaper article that you read, an ad that you saw, something on social media that you caught your eye and you said, wow, I, I didn't even know that this organization existed, but I don't know much about it. So um, an example of, a company that we, um, an organization that we worked for um, was the state of Delaware, but it was their birth control campaign. And if you think of people of all ages that may not know all about certain birth control options and methods that are out there. And so not only do we want to make sure that we're getting in front and crazy, creating awareness at top of the funnel, but then we're going to, as you see, work them down and the funnel to answer questions to ultimately be able to educate themselves and make better and more informed um, decisions on whatever that is. So here's just an example again of 
visual campaign that is executing on the strategy based on target marketing, target markets that we established based on certain goals, um, and then also working through with this market, how are they going to perceive this message where they are in their life? Do And we use something called a health belief model. It's a behavioral model um, that really takes into consideration where people are um, in their thinking process about a certain product service organization. That's a little bit more into um, the top of the funnel and, and how you can be thinking of it not only as yourself, but for your organization. Um, when you're made aware of birth control, right? Whether or not it was an advertising campaign, um, a news article that you read, and then you say, hmm, I just heard of this. It's pretty cool, but I want to know more information about it. So maybe you do a Google search and that's where blogs could come up. This is where we create content like white papers and case studies and reports so that when your constituent, when whoever your community, your target audience, when you're trying to reach them and they're looking for that information, it comes up and you become a trusted source for that information. Um, and again, this could go from something that you're out there creating, some of your volunteers could create, or you're working with an organization to create these materials, use SEO, use Google ads and different ads so that you're popping up and you become that trusted voice and sounding board for that um, for that topic service organization. An example of this, uh, a fun example is our client is a city of Wilmington. We do place marketing, almost uh, business, people, communities, for the city. We want people visiting, traveling to the city. We want to celebrate um, everything that is Wilmington, Delaware. So how do we do that? Yes, that top of the funnel, we're going to do some advertising, but we are doing blogs and videos and in-depth business features to really communicate the value proposition to the target audience that we're trying to reach. I mean, we can do it in a visual, you know, a visual fun um, way using influencers. Really, the sky is the limit. It also it always goes back to that strategy of what's your goal and who are you trying to reach. A little deeper dive before we get into the tiers on the top and the middle. And then Joe, Joe's going to talk about really what this is all about. It's convert converting people from that big idea to contemplating, to taking action. Sure. Thanks, Lise. So again, we, we, we went over the top funnel. That's awareness. That's mainly social media. Uh, SEO blogs are related to SEO. There's some of that and, and there's advertising. And then we get people to the middle funnel, as Lisa mentioned. That's more around engagement, influencer marketing, engaging folks on social media, capturing their, their information. And then finally, at the bottom of the funnel, where services kick in. It's really about activation, conversion, and then ultimately reporting. So if someone comes to your website and they're really interested in downloading a guide or an annual report or a how-to, or they attend an event, as you gather their information, they will go into that CRM that we mentioned, that customer database. And then we could start to personalize all the messaging because we'll know what they're interested in. Do they want to participate in a race? Do they want to donate? Do they want to volunteer? Are they an active member in the community that you're trying to reach and, and drive behavior change? So you'll start to gather this information and then personalize and automate. So you know that makes it automated. So you're not doing this for every single person. Uh, so you can really get them through that funnel. So they go from awareness you're educating them, and then they're making that donation. They're they're converting. So these are some of the um, you know traditional marketing type services that we offer, but present it in in that bottom funnel uh, as well. And we'll just give you an example on the next slide of of, of what this looks like. Um, here's Vituity Cares. They're an organization that really tries to address health inequity in about five five different markets, but then on a national level as well. 
they um, they partnered with Asan Minaj, a, a comedian. So leveraging him as an influencer. Now, everyone's not going to be able to get a Comedy Central comedian, comedian as an influencer, but whoever that may be, it's it's leveraging folks, you know, that are important to the community, putting them in social media, helping them drive registration uh, at the bottom of the funnel, whether it's for, you know, to donate or attend an event. But in this case, our goal was to drive event registration. So we built a landing page that was just about the event, showcased the influencers, captured folks' information. And then when they did the virtual event on a national level, we did the marketing for them. So as the event was going on, we were engaging folks in the chat and on the virtual stream of the event. And then even post event drive, you know, since we captured all the information for folks who registered, engaging them as well. So at the bottom of the funnel, ton of different opportunities to really uh, use marketing, use the tools and technology to to drive your 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 funnel. In this case, it was event registration and and donations. And here's just an example of a full funnel campaign. So in some cases, like these other retainer services, we had clients come to us and said, hey, we, we need help at the top funnel. We need bottom funnel, mid funnel. You know, we might just need social media support throughout all the funnels. And in other cases, we really serve as the nonprofit's marketing and technology arm. So here's a case for safety. It's a OSHA um, non it's a it's an OSHA backed nonprofit to provide um workforce safety, health and safety. So we use, we have to get people aware of it. So we use Zoom info, which is different than the Zoom we're using now. It's the largest email database in the world, basically. And we could target folks who are hairdressers, people in construction, all different types of business owners. We have that list. We email them about the program. They come to the website. They're looking at social media. They're learning about safety tips. That drives them to the website. Once they get to the website, we develop landing pages and really great content. So folks will want to get a newsletter, submit their information, they opt in for that. And then the bottom funnel kicks in where we're emailing them. And ultimately the goal is to get folks to request a free consultation and they get reimbursed by the government for the consultations they, they provide. So we came up with the brand, the marketing, all those project-based things, the website in the beginning, once all that was set up, we served as their full-time marketing agency to, um, to support them. On the far right, you can see that's what the back end of HubSpot looks like. There's the, um, the construction worker that we're targeting, and you can't really read that, but basically it's an algorithm of, okay, sees the social media post, reads a blog. If they read that blog and, and then download the book, we get their email address, and then you can see all the different automations that kick in ultimately to get this gentleman to uh, request a consult. And that's the power of a CRM, or in this case, HubSpot, that really drives uh, the marketing. So I hope that was helpful. I know we only have a few minutes left and people are, are super interested in what all this stuff costs. Um, so we'll go into that. I think that's the next slide. Well, how to, how to get to where we're going. So if you go to, if you go to TechSoup's homepage, Click on services and scroll down. You'll see website services and digital marketing. That's uh, that's us. And we, you know, we're partnered with TechSoup and you'll see all the different services that are offered there and you can request a free consultation. But for today's purposes, um, kind of want to go through some of the pricing and, and how that pricing works for a lot of this stuff. So if you're looking at a project and let's say you want to, you need a whole new logo, messaging, a brand guide, the works. Generally, that starts around $9,000. This is for nonprofits once they've already been established or have the funding to really want to scale and, and drive their marketing. You're going to need your branding and a brand guide all locked up, especially when you're working with Google and Facebook and different partners uh, who, who are going to be uh, participating in getting your brand, getting your brand out there. If that's too expensive, we have services that are just to set up your logo and, and you know, we can get that down to one or $2,000. But again, that just depends on how many 
reiterations we have and 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 examples uh, as well. So that's branding and design. Website development that starts at fifteen thousand dollars. If you want to do a WordPress type website, a lot of nonprofits start with Square space and Wix for a few thousand dollars that gets your name out there that like, like Lisa said, they're more brochure websites and, and they're limited in scope. But once you really start fundraising and you're driving volunteers and you're managing events and you have multiple different um, platforms and audience target audiences you're going after, you're going to need your website to be on WordPress. It's got the most plugins. It's the most secure. It'll really help you scale and you know, for, for a WordPress type website with, with those bells and whistles, that's what it starts with. If you wanna do a specific landing page or a microsite, you can get on WordPress for around $5,000, but to seriously consider you know, scaling your organization on WordPress, um, that's kind of the starting point. For CRM implementation, for HubSpot, you know, there's a license for HubSpot that could range from $300 to $900 a month. It depends how many contacts you have. That's for more mid-size, you know, half a million to million dollar type nonprofits who would eventually get into HubSpot. If you're not using, if you're not that size, you know, you can work with MailChimp or Constant Contact and use their C CRM. But for something like HubSpot or a more integrated marketing automated platform that could host your site and manage everything, social, email, blogs, content marketing, donations, e-commerce, you know, something like HubSpot starts at around $6,500 to get all of that set up. And then as far as AI goes, AI could, it, it just depends on how much work it is. So what we have is a is a nice solid offering. That's nine seventy five. That gets a consultation. We work with your team to look at all your tools and technology and come up with a, a plan on how AI can can support you. In some cases, folks need it for workflows and marketing. Others, it's operations. Some are syncing their donation platforms into different systems. But we'll take a look at your whole tech stack, your whole ecosystem and see where AI can, can help out. And then that's kind of where that starts out with, with the plan. And then finally, ongoing retainer services. So a lot of nonprofits, you know, especially when they're getting started, instead of hiring, you know, going on and uh, using an intern or hiring someone part-time, we have a whole team here. So you might need website support, or technology support or both, but either way, it could be a blend, but that starts at $4.99 a month. That's, it's about, I think it's four hours a month where you have access to our team. You meet with the team each month. We take a look at what your needs are. And then during the course of the month, we help you get there. So it could be whether you need help on a landing page, it's social media templates for a partner. It could be, um, design assets for an event, posters, whatever it could be, marketing, website, technology, we're here and it's hourly based and, and it's a support service. And then finally for you know full scale campaign management, that's top bottom, top mid bottom funnel type support that starts at $5,500 a month. And that's for larger nonprofits who are really looking to drive donations, drive impact in the community, and need support just like a, a full service communication agency, basically, and technology firm where we're doing everything for you, keeping your website up to date, improving the website, doing your social media, your advertising, email marketing, helping drive donations, the reporting for investors, all of that full funnel campaign management um, that starts around 5,500 5, a month. So hopefully that, that's helpful. We just want to be realistic in terms of the pricing that will really make an impact for your nonprofit and for folks who are just getting started, putting some services offering together at the $499, $500 a month mark. So at least you have that support to, to help you scale where then you can either bring on a team yourself or work with an agency such as TechSoup and TAP to, to manage your marketing.
So hope that's helpful. We'll answer some questions and we have a bunch of um, great tools and eBooks that are Lisa can share as well to get, to get you started. Yep, absolutely. I'm chatting with a few people now, but um, letting them know that you will all get these resources. They're here. They're going to be links in the PowerPoint as well as in a follow-up email. Um, the first free resource we have is all about CRMs and how do you choose the right one? So this is perfect for all of the people asking about what about Salesforce? What about this one? What about HubSpot? How do we start? Um, it really walks you through step-by-step step of how to make that decision for your organization. So we're happy to share that with you. Um, and the next resource is unlocking the power of AI for your nonprofit. No matter the stage you're in, no matter the resource, no matter the funding, um, open AI is that open. It, it's a free resource. There is paid versions, but of course there is a free resource. So how can you maximize those free resources and help you with your marketing goal, goals, um, a great first step. So again, um, you will be getting this information um, with a link to download. Um, I put the link in the chat. Some people are asking about how we could um, get a consultation. And so it is right on TechSoup's website. You can fill out the form and we will um, get right in touch with you. So, no, no, Joe, if you're looking at the QA or I could pull up some while we have um, just about four minutes left. Sure. I guess, I, you know, it, it seems like a lot of questions are around, you know, the size of the nonprofit and and, and what's affordable. Uh, we we work with a lot of different nonprofits, you know, with, with, with TechSoup and you look at the whole nonprofit, you know, landscape, there's the majority of, of the folks are in the 100K range, right? Small, smaller nonprofits. And for those folks, you know, they, they usually start out with Wix, like I was saying. And then once you get to the 100, 200K level, they upgrade to a WordPress website and then start to, you know, leverage some of those services, the 500 to a thousand dollar a month retainer services. Um, you know, and that's, you know, you're looking at one to the five percent of of your budget. As you get to the half million to the million plus, that's when a lot of nonprofits then consider HubSpot or you know a similar CRM. If if I saw something in here with Salesforce, Salesforce is free. There's also a free version of HubSpot, but what what you know where the the cost comes in is really integrating it, getting it set up and then managing it. So Salesforce, you're getting ton and ton of, it, it, it might be a little overkill for what nonprofits are looking to do. That's why we, we recommend HubSpot, but either way, it's gonna be the management of that platform and system and having a marketing expert and a technology expert per se to tie all those different pieces together. So your social, your email, your marketing, everything, is running through one system. And when it's working right, it's automated and it's progressively profiling and improving the conversion rates. So if you improve the click-through rate and conversion rate, you know, across the board, let's say you have five different touch points. It could be from your ad to your website, from your website to your blog, from your blog to your donation platform, then from the donation landing page to the actual Stripe page or whatever where people are making the donation. If you could increase just 5%, all those different steps, you could be increasing your, you know, your funding across the year 50 to 100%. And that's really where, you know, the expertise comes in in, ter in terms of tying these things all, all together. So it depends on your budget. And, you know, we kind of, we work with everyone to see what, what's the best in terms of your, your return on investment. Let's see what else we have here. Lisa, see any other questions? Um, I feel like you touched on a lot of them. Um, I was just typing to John, but I'm going to answer this one quickly. He asked, given the fact that the digital marketing space has become largely pay to play, how do you suggest an organization with a smaller budget overcoming that? Um, and very 
quickly, if you can narrow down your target audience, their location, their demographics, and at the same time, narrow down the action that you want to take, you don't have to be at the top of the search results or you don't have to show up with everyone. That will make your budget more efficient and only be show, shown to the people who you want to reach. Um, of course, there's a lot more to it, but we would love to talk to you more about how we can do the most with the budget that you have. And this has been um, wonderful, as I put in the chat, that we will be sending a follow-up email with not only the free resources, um, but also a link to our services and different assessments that you can take for your organization. Um, and we will get uh, back in touch with you quickly. So thank you, everyone. Joe, you have Thanks anything everybody. else? Any other? All right. Nope. Sounds good. Take thank care. you, Aretha. Thank take you. Take care. Bye-bye.